Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. And special guest Charlie, hailing from Pasadena, Southern California. Charlie came a long distance to join the Timmy the Toolman show. We're grateful because we wanted to document a rear axle seal job on an ABS rear end for a third gen 4Runner. We've already done it on a non-ABS and now we want to do it for an ABS. So everybody that has a third gen 4Runner will know how to do a rear axle seal job themselves if they choose to buy some of the special tools that we'll tell you you need to do. If you want to see how we did the job on a non-ABS rear end, click the link above. Right up there. <laughs> you need to do. So, what are we going to use as a reference? Of course, we're going to use the factory service manual, and I'll show you some pages. Now, we're in the suspension and axle portion of the factory service manual. This is my 2000 Toyota 4Runner manual, and it shows all the components, like taking the brakes apart, and then all the parts in relation to the actual axle itself, and then it goes through all the steps. Now. Toyota is, is going to say is you remove the brakes completely, but we've learned that you don't actually have to disassemble the brake pads and all the springs and everything if your brake pads aren't contaminated with gear oil and your, and your brake pads are in good shape. You do not have to take the brakes apart and we're going to show that in this process. So these are all the pages and we'll reference them as we go along and then Sean will put this in the actual video so it'll be, you'll be able to see the pages that we're using. All right, and then the last page. And so going to the parts now, Charlie, like a smart guy, he bought all OEM parts. You can do aftermarket seals and aftermarket bearings, but we highly suggest that you use OEM parts for this. So starting right here, these are the dust seals at, at the end of the axles, 9031348001. These are the two bearings for each side of the axle, and the part number is 90363-400-20-77. Then these are the inner seals that go in the axle housing, and the part number for that is 90310-50006. And then these are these O-rings that go on the actual end of the axle housing tube, and that's part number 90301-88077. The retainers, that actually meet up with the lip of the seal. That is part number 42423-20010. These C-clips right here, these actually go right above the inner retainer, which is above the bearing. And that C-clip part number is 90520-36045. And then these are the ABS skid control wheels. And that's what actually rotates around the axle. The sensor with the magnet senses this thing and then gives you the ABS function. So that part number is 43517-35010. And that's all the parts we need other than you're gonna be disconnecting brake lines from the wheel cylinders. So you're gonna to have to bleed your system and so you're gonna need some dot three brake fluid. And then also we're gonna drain the differential and the differential takes 80W90 gear oil, so you're gonna need some gear oil too. And then another thing that would be nice to have is that it's always good practice to replace fill and drain plug crush washers when you're doing this, so don't reuse the old washers. You can, but it's not recommended, so replace those crush washers with fresh washers. And that's pretty much all the parts you'll need. Now, special tools that I bought for this, this special tool, and there's another plate for different applications. This comes from the company DuraSolid. This is a special tool you use in conjunction with a press to remove all the parts. Another thing I bought that's necessary with this type of tool is you need a bearing splitter. So this, this is a bearing splitter that we're gonna capture the ABS gear and be able to pull it off with this tool. They use them in conjunction with each other. And so this is part of this OTC kit. 4518. In the video description, we're going to give you a link to buying this bearing splitter if you choose to go this exact route that I'm using. And we'll put a link to the DuraSolid tool that you can also buy straight from the company. Another thing we have for this job is a 20 ton press that I bought at Harbor Freight. Now you might be looking at this thing, man, this must be expensive, but full price at this and any given day at a Harbor Freight, it's like 200 bucks. But regularly, you can find these things for like 160 bucks on sale like all the time. So if you're patient, you're not in a rush to do this, wait for the sale and buy one. 
Now, is this for everybody? Does everybody have the room for a press? Does everybody want to spend the money on special tools? You have to make that decision yourself. We're going to show you how you can do this complete job all by yourself with the right tools. You have three options in order to fix your leaking rear axle seals. One, you can basically go to a shop and pay full price and let them do the whole thing for you. Number two, you can choose to do part of the work, which is pull the axles out of the, the rear end and then take them to a machine shop that knows what they're doing and then you can have them pull off all the parts and press on all the new parts back on for you and then you install the axles back in your axle housing and bleed the brakes and fill the differential yourself. Number three is the way we're doing it where we're choosing to do it all by ourselves but what it requires is a little bit of investment in tools but the money you save on this job gains you some tools that you could use for different things. You could use a press for a lot of different things. So if you're into auto mechanics, you can get a lot of use out of this press. Now, are you gonna get a lot of use out of that special DuraSolid tool that we're gonna use to press the parts off? Not necessarily, that's a very kind of specific tool, but you could help your other third gen 4Runner friends and help them out. So definitely the tool can get some use, especially if you have other friends with 4Runners and you wanna help them out. There is another option to bind that special tool and you can actually make your own tool. So if you know how to fabricate and weld, I'll show you right now how you can do it. Another way that people do that are good at welding and fabricating, they basically find an old rear end at a junkyard and then they cut it somewhere around there. They cut it and they basically uh, torch off all these other parts that they don't need like the shock mount and this rear control arm mount and then they weld on some arms on either side to where they can lay it into the press and then basically make their own tool. So that's your other option. We'll show you a, a link to a picture of what I'm talking about so you're not confused uh, what it looks like. Now you might be thinking that hey, I can do this job for really affordable. All I gotta do is get a couple new seals from Toyota, rip off the old ones, knock some new ones in, and call it a day. But we, what you don't know is that the reason why your original seal failed is maybe because you had excessive bearing play. And that bearing play over time allows the axle excessive movement and it will wear out the seal. If you saw the telltale sign of gear oil splatter on your wheel or maybe you your braking was messed up and you pulled a drum and you realize oh my brakes are coated in gear oil another thing that that gear oil is doing it getting in that spot where it can get to the brakes is the gear oil can get into the bearing the bearing is lubricated with grease not oil so that gear oil from the differential gets into the casing of the bearing and washes out the grease and then now you have a compromised bearing, it's not gonna last as long and it's gonna fail. So if you have gear oil that got into your brakes, don't try to save yourself some money on the bearings, just replace the bearings because you're gonna save yourself some time in the long run and headache not having to do the job all over again. Just replace the bearings and do it right the first time. All right? So with all that said, I blah blah quite a bit there. We're ready to go. So we've prepped the vehicle already. We've got the rear end jacked up. We've got the truck resting on six ton jack stands on the axle housing. The wheels are in the air so we can take them off. One of the front wheels is chocked fore and aft so the truck can't roll forward, it can't roll back. We're gonna get the wheels off and then we're gonna start tearing apart things to get the axles out. And you have to have the parking brake off so you can get the parking brake released from the back of the backing plate. So that's everything. So we've got the wheels off. The next thing we want to do is get the drums off. This might take a little bit of a uh, force. You have to tap on the hammer. Let's just see how tight they're on. These are coming off. It looks like no problem, but maybe a little tap will help. Just gotta wiggle it back and forth. These gloves don't make it easier. There we go. It's coming. There we go. A lot of brake dust. Pour this brake dust out. All right. Next, we're just gonna use some brake clean and just clean up all the stuff because there's instead of having dust flying all over the place and just breathing it in. We're just gonna clean up the parts with some brake clean first before we pull the axles out. Good to have a catch container below to catch this stuff. We're getting high up brake cleaner right now. A 
I think that's probably pretty good for now. We're gonna clean out the drum too with a little brake cleaner. Okay, so the next step, taking the brake drums off, we've cleaned them up with brake cleaner, and then now we're gonna drain the differential. A good practice, always see that you can get the fill plug off first before draining from the drain plug because if this thing's locked on and you can't get it off, now you've basically screwed yourself because you got an empty differential that you can't drive anywhere. So always test first. You have to pull this parking brake cable out of the way a little bit. You could either use a breaker bra like me, a ratchet, it, depending on who tightened it last or how tight or how long it's been since it's been off. But but his is pretty loose. So then you could transition to a ratchet once you got it loose. And that's loose, so I'm happy with that. We got it now. I'm gonna tack the drain plug. So the drain plug's right underneath here. I'm gonna see if I just break it free with the ratchet. Ah, the breaker bar will be better. There we go, it's broken free. Should just spin off now. Yep. Whoa. Oh, his gear oil looks really nice. He's, you changed this recently, huh? Yeah. Okay. So just let that drain out. If you open up the fill plug a little bit, it'll go faster. It'll let air through. There we go, now it's got air. The difference, you can't mix these up because the drain plug has a magnet on it to catch microscopic metal shavings that happen over time over wear. So this has a magnet on it, so that's the, the drain plug. The fill plug just has a, like a, an indentation, a hole. So you really can't mix them up. But like I said, this is the crush washer right here. Replace these crush washers when you get ready to fill it back up. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna release the parking brake from the bell crank so it's just got this little clip here. You pull it out just a little bit and then you could just pull it off like so. I just hit the camera. So you got your little clip here and then you got this pin and the pin just pushes out. Now that the clip is out of the way, you just push up and you remove this pin. And then now this, was, that, now this is disconnected from the bell crank. Now the parking brake is disconnected from the backing plate. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the brake line from the rear of the wheel cylinder, which is right here. It's a 10 millimeter, we're gonna use a flare nut wrench. So before we get started taking this off, we have a vacuum cap assortment kit. The nice little trick is, instead of letting the brake fluid leak all over the place once you disconnect it from the back of the, of the wheel cylinder, we got these different sizes and we learned that the, the 730 seconds is pretty good to slide over the flared part of the tubing. It actually doesn't go over the threads, but it goes over the flared part of the tubing and it stops the fluid from just leaking completely out. So we save a lot of brake fluid this way by doing this. You always use a flare nut wrench when you're working on tubing fittings like this, like whether it's brake line, air conditioning lines, it gets a better connection rather than a regular open end wrench. Lefty loosey, righty tighty, break it free. Maybe I can back that out with my fingers now? Maybe not. This is where a ratcheting one would be nice, but I don't have a ratcheting one. Helps to just flip the tool back and forth. Let me get a rag underneath there. Yeah, push it in a little bit, and then it will release tension on the nut. Get your vacuum cap ready. And then see the flared part here? You just put the vacuum cap over that. There we go. Hopefully that stops the leaking. Yep, so it's just going over the little, you push this nut back and you just put the 730 seconds vacuum cap right over the flared part of the tubing and it holds it to where now it's not leaking fluid all over the place. So we'll do the other side. So the next step, you've got the brakes disconnected, you got the lines capped off so you're not puking brake fluid all over the place. Now you gotta remove the ABS sensor. So the ABS sensor is held on with a small 10 millimeter nut. Get in here with like a mid-length extension with a 10 millimeter socket, 3 h drive, or half inch if you choose. Loosen that and take it out. Okay, bolts out. 
Now these have a little O-ring in there that kind of helps seal it. Let me first try with these spark plug tube wire re removal tool. I'm going to see if I can just grab it and grip it and pull it out. And it looks like it's working. So it pulls right out. You can see the O-ring that I'm talking about right here. There's a little O-ring. That's what's kind of giving you resistance to pulling it out. So now what's nice about being able to easily remove this ABS sensor is this gives you a window into your axle housing. So when you look inside here, you can see the ABS sensor rotor that's pressed onto the axle. Over here, a little more inboard is where the inner seal is that the retainer on the axle makes contact with that makes a leak proof seal. So the, all the gear oils in here, none gets past this point. If if you want to check to see if your axle seals are leaking, if you haven't got the telltale sign of a splatter of gear oil all over the inside of your wheel, or you notice your brakes have been compromised and you're getting a little pulling, letting you know something's up, take the tires off, you get in here with your head, you take the AB sensor off, and you turn this thing. You turn the axle shaft. And what the ABS gear does is it acts like a water wheel. And if there's any gear oil accumulated in this part of the axle housing where it shouldn't be, the ABS gear is gonna lap it up like a water wheel and you'll be able to see it. And right now, I think I see a little bit on there which lets us know that it, it, his axle seals are leaking a little bit. But this is how you can do a, a check for yourself. Just check to see, hey, am I leaking or am I not leaking? So this is a, an important thing to know. Or maybe you've paid for a job like I did at a Toyota dealership and they screwed it up. And I learned via this method that they did screw it up. So this is a nice thing to know. The next step is we're gonna take these four nuts that hold the axle onto the axle housing and then we're gonna pull our first axle out and show you what it looks like. I'm using a long 14 millimeter socket because this stud is just, just long enough to where you can't get a shorty on there. And I'm using about a foot long breaker bar to break them loose first. Okay, that one's loose. That one's loose. There we go, that one's loose. Now, there's one that's a little harder to get to. So I'm gonna break this one free with just a box end wrench, a big uh, 14 mil long one that I get extra leverage. So this is a long, long daddy-o. It's about a footy. And there, that's loose. What's cool about this gear wrench is that it's got a ratcheting side too. Wrong way. Okay, and that's loose. Once you break them free, you should be able just to remove them by hand. If I didn't say so before, these magnetic pans are really handy to keep track of your parts. See, nothing's falling. The next step is now that we got the four 14 millimeter nuts that holds the axle onto the housing, this thing should just pull right out. Like so. Now, be careful because it's heavy. And there it is. Let's get this up on the bench. So let's discuss some parts now. So this is the inner retainer that makes contact with the seal inside the axle housing. Now this is the ABS rotor. You go down further, this is the inner retainer. And right in between it, you can't really see, there's a C-clip that we'll show later when we pull it off. And then this is your bearing right here. So the first thing we're gonna do to get this stuff off is we have to pound these out of the way because that bearing splitter is not gonna be able to get on here with these studs out of the way. So we're gonna screw those the nuts on, pound them through, because they're like a serration bolt that, that sucks into here. And then we're gonna be able to get on and pull these parts off, and then we'll attack the next ones. Now, it's kind of maybe hard to see, but you can see some witness marks on here. Charlie has put the newer seals that were made by Toyota at some time in the past. Toyota redesigned them, and the thing to note that's really important is that the lip of the seal now sits more inboard towards the third member. So this direction right here is towards the differential, the center of the differential, the third member. So when they changed it, 
it's now closer to here. So when you keep the retainer in the OEM spec location, it's barely riding on the polished surface. See, this is the polished surface you want the axle lip to be riding on. This is a, a non-polished bevel. You don't want it riding on this. So it's kind of interesting. We could see two witness marks. We could see one more in the center, and then we could see another one that's a little bit up higher. And the middle one has got to be the original witness mark where the original seal was riding and then when he put the new seals on now you can see it's riding here it looks like it's barely riding on the shoulder maybe about two millimeters and here's where the problem arises if you have a leaking axle seal and this is all you do is replace the axle seals with the newer ones that Toyota made you're going to be riding somewhere in this area now with a little bit of bearing movement. See all this movement here? That's bearing movement. And if the axle moves just a little bit back and forth, then sometimes that lip of the seal is riding on this non-polished bevel. You're gonna wear out that lip seal lip and you're gonna start leaking all over again. People, time and time again, are wondering why the hell is their axle seals leaking again after they put new seals on? And this is the reason, because Toyota redesigned the seals and maybe the person doesn't know this. This is something that I learned on a Toyota forum. So in order to correct this, to make the inner retainer match up with the inner seal better is we're gonna flip the orientation. We're gonna put the bevel facing the ABS gear and then this way when the retainer goes into the axle seal, it's gonna get immediately up onto a polished surface and doesn't have to first go through this non-polished bevel. Some might say, well, why don't you just press this retainer not on as far on the axle? Well, because right behind the seal, the axle housing goes down to a narrower diameter. So you come really close. If you want to get the, to where the seal is more riding in the middle of the polished part of the retainer, you're going to be coming super close to this retainer rubbing on the inside of the axle housing. And that's not a good thing. Instead, we're just going to flip this around and then press it on about the same distance right here. We just measured this with some digital calipers and we found that it's about, we're measuring from the start of the polished axle to the retainer, and it's about four and a half millimeters. When we flip this around, we're gonna press this retainer on, start at about three millimeters. We're gonna see with the grease test where it's riding. If it's not riding in the center, we're gonna press this retainer on further and keep on redoing the grease test till we have the seal lip riding right dead center, which is what we want. And I hope that makes sense. Okay, so looking at this inner retainer that meets up with the axle seal, you can see these two shinier marks right here. Those are witness marks. This is where the seals were riding on the retainer. So knowing that the new axle seal that Toyota designed sometime in the past has a lip of the seal sitting more inboard this way, we could pretty much surmise that this inner one is where the old seal was riding on this retainer. And uh, other one, this one more inboard, is where the new seal was riding. And you can see that this is not ideal. This is barely riding on the polished surface right near the bevel. Any little bit of axle play uh, back and forth is going to sometimes cause that seal lip to ride on the non-polished bevel. And what's going to occur is you're going to have a, another axle seal fail and you're going to be leaking all over again. So the best way is to redo the whole thing, replace all these parts with the bearing and flip the retainer to get in a better orientation. So what is the grease test? It's pretty simple. You smear a bunch of grease on the retainer. You slide the axle back in. You bolt it up firm. You spin the axle shaft, you pull it out, and then you'll be able to see, based off of where the axle seal pushed the grease back, you'll be able to then see where the axle seal is riding on the retainer. See this inner part of the axle housing? If you, you're not getting a good connection with the lip of the seal with the retainer, it's not just so easy just to push in a little more inboard because then you come really close to to grinding on the inner part of this axle housing. That's why one person came up with the idea of flipping the retainer in a reverse orientation so you don't have to press it in as far where it'll hit. In order to get this bearing splitter on underneath the ABS gear so we can pull it off with the press, these studs are in the way. So what you do is you thread the nut on level with the end of the stud and then you grab a brass hammer or you could use a, a brass drift too and you just pound them out. It's serrated as it pulls into this part of the backing plate. Let's see how much force it takes. Quite a bit. 
That's not budging. Oh, it's moved a little bit. It has moved. That one's through. That one's through. That one's through. This one's a little bit tricky because they got here, so maybe I'll get a drift and I'll do it with a drift. So I'm using this brass drift so I don't like slam the bell crank. There we go. We're just gonna keep those on there so the, the brakes don't fall. I think now we can get that bearing splitter on there. So this bearing splitter comes apart. You can slide it together underneath and capture the ABS gear. Put your other nuts on. So next, we're cinching this thing up, the bearing splitter up underneath the ABS gear. Just making sure we get a good bite on it. Now we slide our special tool over the top. Oh, it beats up fine. Okay, perfect. Put your nut and washer over the top there. Just hand tight. Doesn't have to be cinched down. And then now we're going to bring this whole assembly over to the press. You have to figure out how high you get. These arms are movable, so you got these pins, you got all these different slots. So I think in this case, when we did it the last time, it, this the top setting for this cross member is about the right spot. So you bring your axle with the special tool underneath, and then you bring it up, and it's got some strength here, and then you capture it with these black plates that come with your Harbor Freight press. Then you center it underneath there. Instead of doing all the, the pressure, you can push the springs down and you could back this thing out a little bit so you could start off much closer to what you're pressing. So that's good. Now I could center this a little more. We have this foam pad that we use to lay on working on trucks, so that's our crash pad. Because as soon as we pull off the ABS gear and the retainer, this is going to crash to the ground, okay? This is just like any other jack. You can release the pressure on it, and then you can turn it to set it to where you can start jacking it up. So that's tight. Now you start jacking down. Start jacking down, not jacking off. That's later. <laughs> okay, this is the moment of truth. All new territory for Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Oh, we got movement. That's a good sign. All right, we're pressing away some more here. We got a better camera shot for you. There's a little bit of movement. I can see that that gap is reducing of the polished surface of the axle. And it's coming off. There we go, I caught it. And there it's free. So you have your inner retainer, ABS gear, off. Now we got to pull this assembly out and we have to get these studs back in because we need these for the next step. I'm going to get that on. Bring that down. So here's the parts that we pulled off. The ABS gear here and the inner retainer there. So now the next step is we got to pull these studs back in. We've got washers on here and the reason for the washers is there's not threads all the way down. So I need a little bit of a washers to take up space as I tighten the 14 millimeter nut down to draw that serrated bolt back into this housing right here. And so then we can get this tool over bolted to this to press the other parts out. So that's why we're doing that. We have to get these back in. Sure. Yeah. So right now I'm just, I'm pulling it in, pulling the serrated bolts back into where they live. Go home. Go to your home. Go to your home. You know what movie that is? Just go home. That's your home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me. Get 
When we were pounding these studs off, we basically moved the bearing a little bit out of its housing. And what that did is now, when we slide this over to get this tool in place, we can't bolt the studs on because the, the backing plate needs to come up. In order to get the bearing back into the, where in the right spot in the backing plate in the housing, I'm just gonna pound this on with some wood so I don't destroy the end of the axle shaft and hopefully it just pops back in easy. Is that it? That was it. <laughs> One simple tap. It's back in. <laughs> that was easy. All right, so it didn't take a lot of force. I just used a tiny bit of force to pound the bearing back in. As actually you can see, the bearing was near the lip of here. Now it's down, sunk in like five millimeters or more, maybe more than that, maybe like more than a quarter inch. Now the next step, see this little black thingamajigger? That's your C-clip. We got to get that C-clip off and then we can get the special tool in to press this stuff off. Okay, so I'm using the snap ring pliers. And I got a screwdriver ready to go to get underneath there. It's a little bit finicky to get off. There we go, finally. Timmy the tool man struggles with these. I don't know why, but I do. All right, now it's time to slide the special tool over. This one I'm using is a, the different adapter. It's got two holes in each corner rather than just the, the one hole. Two holes is better than one hole. And like before, we notice that this barely gives us enough stud to work with, but it's just enough to get them started. And then we'll sink it in a little more. And we got it set up again, just like similar. We're capturing this blue flange with the plates that come with the press. We're lining this up with the pressing, pressing penis, whatever you want to call it. That looks pretty square. Now we press down. Same thing happened last time. Scary noise. That's it breaking free, that first part. Shut, shut that kid up. I'm gonna be a good parent. No, I'm not gonna be a good parent. Oh. Yeah, the press was far last time. Oh, you know, it's further because it's an ABS. You have to bring the oh, retainer no. further. It's more, it's further than the non-ABS. Like, why are we going so far? Maxing out here almost? Yep. Yeah, that's maxed out. It's still going. Is it? Yeah. It moves and then goes back. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's maxed out, huh? We'll have to reset. We came up a little bit short, and unfortunately, I'm sometimes uh, used to coming up a little short. So, it's a nice sunny day in California here. I'm getting sweaty. Something better. It's pretty lined up. Okay. Let's see if we can finish pressing this thing up. Max out again. There it is. It fell out the bottom. No more axle shaft there. It's down there. Okay. Loosen this up. Magic. Okay. Now we've got to remove the plates. Tip this 
up. And bring it back over here. Okay. I got the uh, four 14 millimeter nuts off. Slide that off. Retainer. Inner retainer is free now, but the bearing isn't. So the next step is get the bearing out. So back to the press. Well, let me slide this out first. So, there we go. Now you have your clean axle. Now you just watched us successfully do the press work on Charlie's EBS axle. But what you don't know, what I'm trying to tell you now, is that we had a major problem with the second axle. We thought it was going to go smooth and everything's going to be hunky-dory, but it wasn't. And here's what happened. Because of the way the plate is made, it's nice and thick. It's three-quarter inches thick. So when you get the ABS gear and the inner retainer out of the way, these two parts, remember that you first had to knock these studs out to where you can get the bearing splitter and pull these off. So now these are out of your way. And then we pulled these original studs back in, right? And then we slide the plate over and then we put our nuts on. Well, here's the problem. This was the fourth axle that we did that we had the failure on. We did this twice on an ABS rear end for this guy Jordan that lives near me. And then this was the second of two axles that we did for Charlie from Pasadena. And because this particular side just needed a little bit more force to get the axle shaft to push through the bearing, the fact that we were only able to capture a few threads on either corner wasn't enough to hold this plate on. So what happens, these threads gave way and the whole assembly came crashing to the ground. So we were kind of stuck. So what did we do? Well, we sent Sean over to Toyota to see if he can find some more of these studs. This is one of the ones that stripped, the very end of the thread stripped. So we was able to find a couple and then we had them buy some new nuts too. But we still had to figure out how we were gonna do the press work. So this is what Charlie and I came up with. We went to Home Depot and we bought longer bolts. These are an M10 bolt, two inches in length. If you put it up to this next to the other one, the original bolt, you can see it's a half an inch longer. This is a, an inch and a half and these are two inch bolts. So what we had to do, is see we once again had to take the hammer, we threaded on the nuts on each corner, we pounded them out, and then we replaced them with these longer bolts. And what the longer bolts did for us, it allowed us to capture more threads. So instead of only capturing this many threads, like two or three, we were able to capture quite a bit, you know, a lot more to where now we have a much more solid connection with this plate, with backing plate, to where when we do the press work, these studs aren't gonna give way and have the whole assembly crash to the ground. So if you do that route, you buy yourself four M10 bolts, two inches long. Then once you get done with the press work, you take these out and you pull these studs back in like we showed you earlier, where you use the washers and then you just tighten the nut down and you draw these serrated bolts back into the bearing housing. And then the rest is as is. Now there's a second way you can do this and so, I basically decided I would mill this plate to become a more useful. And so I had a local machine shop mill out five millimeters of material in each one of these bolt hole corners. This is the plate with the two bolt holes that actually matches up great with this. So I just had them mill out five millimeters material. The guy charged me like 40 bucks. And then another thing I did is I took a round file and I round filed out this one side because what ends up happening uh, when I did the first press work for this guy, Jordan, when you tighten this plate against the bearing case, it first hits this outer retainer. And what happens is, is you basically destroy the first thread anyways, it's not useful. I tried to thread the pipe in after that first job and it wouldn't work. I could only thread it in from one side. So now the tool, plate is actually one directional. You can't thread it in from both sides. So I just went ahead and took it a notch further and filed this out to where I rounded out the hole a little wider to where when I put the plate onto the axle, 
it fits more square. It's not rocking on the on the retainer as bad. And then now you can see I can capture way more threads now with the plate. I can basically take the nut all the way level to the top of the stud, which is great. If you need more force than what these will hold, something's got to be wrong. So this is a second way you can do this. This will cost you some money unless you have a buddy that works at a machine shop, which, you know, who knows, maybe you do. So anyways, this is your second option to address the issues with the Dura Solid tool to make it work better for you. So number one, buy yourself some longer bolts to do the press work. And then once you're done, put the original bolts back in. Number two is you just take your plate to a machine shop and have them mill out some material to where you can now capture more threads of the studs. I wanted to share this with you because it's important because I want you to repair to go smooth. It's almost always something goes wrong with the repair. It's just nature of the beast, mechanics 101. But this was a bummer because Charlie came all the way from Pasadena. I was trying to get him on the road earlier because he drove down early, six hour drive to San Jose, and I was hoping to get him home earlier, but as it was, we didn't get him back on the road till 6 p.m. The repair was successful. We got him back on the road, so if you're watching this, Charlie, sorry for getting you on the road so late, but it was successful, and I wanted to share this important information of how you can make the Dura Solid tool, which is a well-made tool. It's very stout. You're probably not gonna ever break this thing, so just alter it a little bit or use longer bolts and you'll be better off and you won't have the catastrophic failure that we had and then a delay in finishing the job. So that's enough for that. Now we got to get the bearing out and we'll show you how we set that up on the press. Before we press out the bearing, we're going to get the seal out. I learned from the last job, I could just grab onto this and kind of pull up. Boom. Boom goes the dynamite right there. So that's your like dust seal right there. Bearing is right here. So we're gonna get a sleeve and press this out this direction towards, towards this direction and press it out this way. And we'll show you how we set up the press for that. What we did, we've done this one time before on a non-ABS, like I said earlier. We stack up these blue plates, kind of uh, like a diamond shape or whatever. And uh, we basically put these studs here into the holes so we're basically given a, a little bit of room. We're just going to press the bearing until it meets up with the blue plate. And then we're going to do another step to get it the rest of the way out. This bell crank sticking in between the arms. So I'm going to get it lined up with the holes. Just like so. Bell crank is in between. And then now. I have to get a pressing sleeve to something to press on to push the bearing out. So I get my press sleeve kit. All right. I guess I'll just crank it down. So we're just gonna press the bearing out, just like going out like butter. <laughs> It just fell out. Done. It's down all the way, huh? Yeah, the bearing's out. It'll okay. just fall out now. It's probably gonna fall. You might experience this that the bearing is not really stuck in there very, very well because we kind of loosened it up when we pounded the studs out to do the first procedure. So this might be the case. You don't really have to use a lot of effort. Now, will it come out all the way by hand? Almost. It's still a little bit in there, but instead of dicking around with the press, we're just going to bring it to the bench and then pop it out the rest of the way. So I'm just going to pop it. So it was just hung up on the lip just a tiny bit. Bearing is out. We're just going to put a tiny little bit of grease on here to get ready for the new bearing. What do you think, Charlie? That looks like, like it'll work. Okay. Now we have to get this set up to press the bearing in. So where's the new bearing? Right here. Dun da da da. It's got the 6308 on that side. Let's put the part number side up. What do you think? I don't think it matters, does it? Same thing, huh? Okay. So we're gonna go in like so. Is this gonna drop in like it did the last time? 
we're not going to do that. We're not going to get it all stuck in there. So we're going to bring it over to the press and we'll show you how to set up the press to get it in. So this is the setup I have. Number one, I bought this hunk of iron. It's like a four inch by four inch square, half inch piece of steel. I didn't have a fabrication shop near my house. I actually found this on Amazon. You could actually buy chunks of plate if you want. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. I've got one of the Harbor Freight black plate supporting on top of the cross member. I got a press sleeve. So this gives a little distance so the brake shoes don't hit. Then I put my plate on here and then I fit this on to where it fits between the brake components, like in this orientation, right in between here and here. So I thought it'd be okay to press on this inner part of the bearing. That's not good for the bearing. Now, could you get away with this? Probably because this bearing, it doesn't require a whole lot of force to seat this bearing into the housing. But a better plan, take your old bearing, put it on top. Now put a press sleeve on there that I have that will work. Put the adapter on there. And then now if we screw up this old bearing, who gives a shit? We're worried about the bearing underneath staying in good shape. So now we'll press down and we're gonna seat the bearing into the housing. <laughs> it fell in. See, it just has, a, it had like a tight little lip to it. So let's just see, that's not fully seated yet. Make sure that this bearing's not gonna get hung up there. Right there, let me stop, go back. Good, okay. Okay, so it is fully seated then. Because I felt the resistance. Okay, now the next step. We gotta get the axle in there with the first retainer. So we're gonna put a little grease in here. We're gonna get the dust seal in. Okay, this just to fit in by hand. Just make sure it's pressed down all the way around the edge. Put a little bit on the inside of the lip too, right? Okay. I put a little grease on here where it's gonna be sliding into the bearing. This is the orientation. You slide it over like this. And that's the first part right there. That's a long distance because it's a non-ABS. It slides on way further. You get a lot more real estate to gain. Okay, so we're gonna grab one of the retainers with the bevel pointing up, because this is the outer one. And get this pressed on, then we'll get the ABS gear and the inner retainer on. There we go. This part of the press is wide enough to where it's gonna hit these little lips, and we want a flat surface to press against. So instead of pressing down on those uh, uneven surface, we're gonna put this plate that I bought, this four inch plate, and put it right on top of there, and then we'll press against that. The way we have this set up is we got the special Duro Solid tool captured with the plates with the Harbor Freight Press, and then we've got a press sleeve that's about the same diameter of this part of the special tool, and that's pressing up against the retainer, the outer retainer, and the reason why we have this in here is because we're doing this without replacing the brakes. So with this still connected, we have to make space for this. We got the sleeve here for that space. Now we're ready to press. So now we're pressing everything in. So the axle shaft is pressing through the bearing while the retainer is pressing up underneath and they're all gonna come and meet up. Right there. Resistance. We should be good. The way we'll know if everything's pressed together right is when we take this out, we'll see that the groove for the C clip is exposed to get it right above that outer retainer. Perfect. Okay. 
Okay, so how do we know we're done? We know we're done because we see the groove where the C-clip goes and it's fully exposed and I can get it in. So next thing, you grab your snap ring pliers, you get them set up on here, go over the top, span it. There we go. Just make sure it's seated all the way. Yep, that's seated all the way. That's one side almost. So ABS gear, this side goes down towards the bearing. Now this is the part that we're going to switch around. Normally the bevel is facing the seal. We're going to flip it and do the Dr. Coffee method from Toyota4Runner.org. So we're going to slide this on next. And we took these off. These were basically married up. So we're going to press them on as one unit. We got to get the blue plate special back in here and press parts on. So here's probably the most important step of getting it right. We want to press these two on together to where we get the right amount of polished axle still showing. So as we press this on, we're going to be pressing it onto the polished surface, this surface, but there's a non-polished surface and we're going to want to be, we're going to start at about three millimeters of polished axle showing, then do a grease test see where we're at and then most likely we're going to have to go further probably to at least five millimeters of polished axles showing so when we get this on a little bit we're going to stop lift up see where it's at and then go back so it's going to take a little bit of time to lift it up see where we're at press a little more take a measurement and make sure we get this right because we don't want to end up pulling this stuff back off we want to be really slow and methodical about pressing this stuff back on Okay. So we know we can go at least that far. Yeah, we're, we'll be able to get most of the way there. Oh yeah. What do you think? Should we stop when we're about level with the studs or stop earlier? Charlie's comparing the other axle. We have it out right now. Where do you think it is? About two more millimeters. Okay. And then we can see if we have any clear Okay, so I'll, re I'll release pressure on this so we can pull it up and see where we're at. Can you see? Yeah, we don't have any polished. No polished yet? No polished surface yet. No polished yet. Okay, so we can go a little bit more. Should we take another three clicks and go uh, check it again? I do about a half a pump from there. Okay. Check it again? Yeah, it's time to check it. I'll lift up, you take a look. All right, that looks like that's where we want it to be. Right about there? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty darn close. Yeah. We might even went more than, more than three millimeters, but I think we're good because we flipped the retainer. So let's take a measurement, get it off with the calipers, take a measurement, do the grease test, and then we'll see where we're at. We're gonna do another grease test. We just measured how much polished axle is from the edge of the retainer to the, the line where the polished meets non-polished axle. We're going to smear grease on here again. We're going to insert the axle, bolt it up, spin it, take it back out, and we're going to see where that seal is riding. Yeah, we got to get the new seal in before we do the grease test. What I have is this fancy puller from OTC. I got this tool in there. Do you need to use one of these to pull the seal? No, I'll show you a different option. I got another very simple tool in my toolbox that I can show you that just hooks the seal from one side and you just use arm strength to pull it out. But having a, a, a setup like this is kind of nice because it just works nice. So I got these tines hooking the outer metal part of the seal and I'm just going to slide hammer it back and not get my finger. There it is. So you can see how, how it hooks, hooks the seal. This is the other tool that I was talking about. Lyle Corporation makes it. And it's an adjustable one. It's got this pin that you can move it to different uh, spots, you know, to different angles. I'll put a link to this. I, I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon, so I got this from Amazon. So you just reach it in there, hook the seal. Whether this will work that good, I don't know. Could I got in there? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think it would have hooked it. And then you just hook one side and you pull out. And if it doesn't come out, you hook the other side and you pull the other side out. So I think this would have worked seal driver kit. So I have this OTC one 
4507. A few different varieties here. You want a press sleeve that fits almost to the perfect outer diameter. You don't want to be pressing more on the inner part. The strongest point of this seal is where it's almost matching up with the exact auto diameter right along this edge. You don't want to go too skinny because then you could de deform the seal. And if you deform the seal, you're basically pushing the lip of the seal in a different spot. So we just want to knock this in without deforming it till it's fully seated. And the axle shaft has a, nor a natural seat where you hit it in and it has a stop and you can't drive it in anymore. So you have to be careful. You kind of, when you feel resistance and it's all the way flush, you stop. You don't keep on pounding to deform the seal. You got to get this in there, get it in as square as you can. Get it started with your hands first. You can kind of push it in there with your fingers and get it started. Right there. That's fully seated. You could hear it. It's like tink, 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 then clunk, clunk, clunk. So, yeah, you hear that? You hear the sound difference? See, that's fully seated now. Take a look at that, Charlie. We're going to insert the axle. We're going to do the grease test to see where it's at and see if we have to press the retainer on further to get a better made up with the seal. Okay. Okay, we're doing the grease test. Yeah. Slide it in. Be careful, don't mess up your new seal that you just pounded in, painstakingly pounded in. So kind of hover it in there, go in slow, look at that. I did that like I knew what I was doing. Imagine that. Okay, we're gonna bolt it up. We got it bolted up securely in the rear, twisting it to where that seal is now gonna make a line on the retainer where it's meeting up with the retainer. Now take it back off. So right now you can see the line that the seal had pushed back the grease, it's right there. And that's not quite centered on this polished part of the retainer. The retainer is like a centimeter. And let's just take a measurement and see how much, how much polished is showing on here. So it's about, God, I can see. It's about six, six and a half. And I know this is like a 10 millimeter section of polished from what I measured before. Yeah, it's about 10, 10 millimeters or a centimeter. So if we push it inboard another another millimeter to where we were before, where we had about four, four and a half showing, we'll probably be close to dead center because that would make it about, yeah, it's about five. So yeah, what do you think? One more millimeter? One more millimeter and we'll be perfect. Yeah, we're gonna try to get one more millimeter. I'm gonna bring it up to where it meets up. Okay, it's meeting up. That moved a little bit. A little bit. Do, do a little bit more. I think guys, we don't want to go any further than that. I don't know if you want to go further than that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I would stop. We don't All want right. to go too far. All right. Let's take another. Let's lower it down and take another measurement. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's closer to four. All right. Let's go a little bit more. That moved a little bit. A little bit. Do, do a little bit more. Yeah, it's like 4.3. Should we just check it? We'll do the grease test. We'll do it. Just for safekeeping real quick. We know we wanted to be right around four and a half, but we're at 4.3. And we're gonna say that that's close enough. We're gonna do the grease test one more and just see how, how good we are. Okay, that's good enough. We could probably go a little bit more because it's right. This is a centimeter. Yeah, it's more like six and four. That's fine. You're that's good with that? I'm totally good with that. That's, that's... Okay. Yeah, we would have been better off with a little bit more, like a half a millimeter more at least, or maybe, I don't know, maybe as much as a millimeter, but you don't want to go any little further. I want a little click? No? Okay. 
I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> Charlie was good with where it was at. Based off of what we saw, where it was right on the retainer, I think with the retainer flip, the Dr. Coffee method, I think five millimeters of polished axle showing would have put it dead center. But the next side, we're gonna try to get five millimeters of polished axle just so we can see uh, how that lines up with the grease test. But I think five millimeters of polished axle showing with the retainer flipped with the bevel facing the ABS gear, I think is gonna be about the money, you know, dead center with the seal. The last thing we gotta do, replace, there's this rubber O-ring on the outside. Let's grab a little screwdriver, peel it off, and put another one on, just like so. That was the easiest part of the repair so far. Okay, now I'm gonna insert the axle shaft the umpteenth time and bolt it in, because we're good. We're torquing these down, these backing plate bolts, the 48 foot-pounds. One thing we're checking to see if you can view the ABS gear through there, I'll turn it, maybe it'll be easier for you to see. So we know that the magnet, this magnet sensor, you could tell here, I'll do this, see, boom, it sticks. It's a magnet, that's how the ABS works. So it, it senses this ABS rotor, and when it locks up, like when you're driving, you get into a skid, it will stop the brake from locking up and then, you know, pulsate, blah, blah, blah. I'm not an ABS expert, but that's kind of how I understand. So clean it up, slide it back into the hole, and put your 10 millimeter nut back in there. This probably has a torque spec. Am I gonna worry about it? No. If you're really, if you're more anal than I am, then we'll get it to you, but I'm just cinching it up tight, choking up on my 3 8 ratchet, calling it good. All it is is holding this little sensor on there. Does this have to be Gorilla tight? No, it's a small fastener. Just cinch it up snug and call it good. The last thing we gotta do for this side is connect the brake line back up and then we're gonna do the other side. Oh, I, I lied. We're gonna get this uh, parking brake bracket hooked back up too. Hey, that was the easiest one I've done so far with brakes. Usually brakes fight me. Okay, get your flare nut wrench. I got a good assistant there. 10 millimeter again. No torque spec for this. I just cinch it up tight with the flare nut wrench. And now we're gonna get the parking brake bracket hooked back up. Let's slide that. Add the pin, add the pin back in. There we go. We're gonna get the brake drum back on. It's kind of started. There we go. Just a little, little cockeyed here. That's a pull away, huh? I think that's it. So the last thing we have to do now that we got both axles in is we gotta fill the differential back up with some 80W90 gear oil. And then after that's good, and, and remember to put fresh crush washers on your drain and fill plugs. Then we're gonna bleed the brakes and make sure that his brakes are working good. And then he's on his way back home to Pasadena. We got a beer in hand, we're done. Was the repair a success? It was. Charlie, was it, it was a success? It was a success. Thank so, you, Tim. You're welcome. So, it didn't go as smooth as I wanted? No, but I guess that's mechanics 101. That's, this shit happens, so. Make sure the bearing gets pressed into the housing, whether it magically falls in, which was, was kind of happening with us. It was kind of flopping in there and, and jumping right in. And then the last time when we did an ABS rear end with Jordan, one side plopped in by hand, the other side got cocked in there because we tried to knock it in, and then that hung us up. So. Really important to get the bearings uh, seated all the way into the housing and the backing plate of the brakes first, and then drive everything together with the axle and the retainer, and like you watched it earlier in the video. So there it is there. We did an ABS rear end, it worked. Thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timothy Toolman and Sean, and special guest Charlie. Charlie, sorry we're getting you back to Pasadena at a late hour, but uh, your truck is now with fresh bearings and seals and ABS gears and fresh fluid and blah, blah, blah. All right, we're done. 
we're out. Bye. Thanks for watching. See you later. Adios. Hasta luego. Sayonara. Blah, blah. Blah. <laughs> All right. <laughs>